Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTL Sullivan. Today, Lamar Jackson doing Lamar Jackson things. Massive win. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. If you're wondering where the Brock Purdy video is this week, guess where it is? The Quarterback School Patreon community, full game analysis over there. Hop over, check it out, enroll, become a member, support the channel. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, big win on the road. First one here, third and eight. A little drive out. We just sky mailed the out. I wouldn't say it was the... Sh like sharpest start to this game for Lamar Jackson and company. This one looks like it's there. Got a few different options here. A little toesy, a little all over the place, a little sky mail. So first up, what exactly is the play? The idea being really common play you see across the landscape of the league where you get the go, the slot out, then you get the drive action. So you get the basic here looking for a pick or this drive coming across so you're trying to get that rub up top make him run the the kind of hump there be able to go there from there across to the basic or the end and you just read this thing right to left usually alert this one two three everything coming in your vision you know for me here one of those things with lamar jackson you can really get in the weeds here as far as the consistency with the footwork the power we just that thing comes out high and hot I think the timing of it looks nice. You know, decent anticipation, a little lowercase a. I think the thing that stings here is not only do you sky mail this and miss it, but you've also got the drive coming across that's probably there as well. So nice kind of snapshot for the offense to have multiple winners. I think when you look at the footwork to me, Lamar Jackson, we're leaking to our right. We're drifting to our right. We're toesy. You know, yeah, you've got some big time pass rushers over there on the other side. But I just feel like, man, that, that's just not the position you see a lot of guys play quarterback from, especially leaking to the right, moving, leaning to the right, ball going to the right. Tough one. Next one here, another miss. This one's a little bit more out of structure. I don't necessarily love the concept up top. This looks like a clear with a corner stop. Not sure exactly why you would pair those things together, but they kind of make this thing work as far as a little mini scramble drill. And Lamar and Flowers just aren't on the same page here at the end of this thing. So no, no, no. Find that lane, and we're just behind him. You can see Flowers expects that thing to keep moving. But concept-wise here, I don't know. I'm not sure why you would want to clear and then a corner stop. To me here, normally you would run these things where this would be more like Seattle Saley where you're taking advantage of this space. I don't know why you would want to run a one where you would stop it there. But because they do stop it, he's able to then drift back across because there's nothing there on time. So no, right here, he's kind of got to move and move and move. And then when he goes to find this lane to be able to drive this thing through, it's certainly there. We end up just putting it behind him, not being on the same page as he expects it to be out this way. So just not quite synced up here to start. Pretty impressive to have this kind of start and turn this thing into the route that this thing was. So no, and you can see the kind of route distribution up top. You just don't see, at least I'm not familiar with why you would want to do this. So stopping here as opposed to continuing onto this space where you can see here, we're, we're running that corner off, right? We're using our resources for a clear but we're not taking advantage of that space. We're stopping and we're essentially staying in the lane of these underneath second level defenders. From here though, it's a nice job to be able to work that scramble back across and find this lane to be able to throw. We just don't hook it up. So again, questioning a little bit of the structure architecture of the play and then the execution at the tail end of the scramble drill is not good enough either. So just not quite synced up here to get going. Really nice pass protection. They do a nice job muddying that thing up on the right. Two one-on-ones to the left. Nice job. 
you know, I, I personally think Lamar Jackson probably makes this thing a little bit harder than it has to be as far as leaning, you know, going full sidearm here. Not doesn't look like his natural kind of spine as far as how he would throw that thing if he was just warming up. And so making it difficult, leaning, ball ends up sliding behind us. Next one here, third and five. We're going to end up shifting down to three by two and to three by one condensed. We're going to hit a quick out up top, a little spray quick out. Now, it's not a perfect throw. Again, you know, the quality of some of the accuracy here, I think, is getting exposed. Now, it's good enough to be a first down. It's living on the edge a little bit for me. You know, if this throws any more behind you, it's potentially a pick six. Again, I don't necessarily, you know, only they know what their rules are. Okay, all I can say is what I would prefer probably isn't this read. And what I mean by that is once we shift here and we're going to go spray quick out up top. So this to this for a first down. Okay. This defender looks like he's outside. I mean, he's not that far off. That's not a gift in my opinion. That's not a gimme. So yeah, the throw is not perfect either. That doesn't help as well. If he puts that thing out in front of him, it probably looks a little bit better. Again, the thing that always stings inevitably is that that's the alert element of this probably. The actual play itself is probably this spot down here where he's coming trying to get a pick and we're catching that rail up the sideline. So we're trying to get a pick right here. If he's got the back, we're coming in here, bump out here two for one as far as trying to get a pick. Make him run the hump here as far as go over or under, and we've got a shot down the field. If that isn't there, it looks like it's paired with spacing. So someone over the ball, someone in the hitch. So man, if you if you were to play this thing out, say you don't like the quick out, okay? Pretend you're me. You don't like the quick out. This looks pretty good too. So you can see the in, kind of the intent, the understanding of what the actual concept is once you get past kind of the gift access quick out. So no quick out. How about down here to the bottom? Now you might get called for a pick or a rub from our guy three, but that's going to be a big play. Regardless, first down, I like if Lamar likes it, let it rip on time. Good enough throw. Conversion backed up. We've been struggling to move the ball here at the start of this thing. Haven't been sharp. You know, not necessarily sharp here, but good enough. Next one here, a rough one on many different levels. So this is the safety. Uh, obviously, the first part about this I think that's worth mentioning is if this umpire doesn't tackle Lamar Jackson, I'm pretty sure this is not going to be a safety. He's going to get away from this. He's not getting caught right there. Like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I know those are three good players. Right there, he's not getting caught from Chase Young going to the corner. He's going to be able to throw that ball away. He just, in my opinion, is pretty rare to see the old umpire fall in his rear, tackle the quarterback. You know, you end up getting the kind of illegal grounding safety bummer. Now, the part that I think is more indicative of an issue for the Ravens is that for some reason, we've got no hot answer here. So all these guys are essentially running some iteration of like a vertical. If if that's what you're doing, so if you've got some form of five verticals and it really doesn't matter what they do once they get past like 10 yards, you've got to throw this hot as a go on the outside, really. Those are your only options. Because we've got five in the pass pro unit, but it looks like they're they're going to this player who inevitably, who starts running over here. Now, I think veteran line groups would hope that they would kick the point from here once he exits the box to here so they would block these five but right here they don't so the offensive line continues to slide now maybe they're always sliding to a certain certain guy who knows what their plan is but you almost never and I, I can say straight up you do never you never want a free runner through the a or the b gaps and we'll talk about that from the back just the interior four gaps but they're only rushing five. Like you never ever want a free runner through the A or the B gap, no matter what the protection. But when they're only rushing five, you would hope that you would have those five blocked as well. Does that make sense? And then even if you did have a hot, no one's looking. Where where do you want him to throw the hot? No one's looking. <laughs> I mean, what? 
There, there is no hot throw. So it's, it's a combination of both bad protection, bad answers for Lamar Jackson, but we, we, you got to have that built in, baked into the system. You can't have no hots on an empty pass pro. And again, if we're sliding left, so this is reason 8 billion, why you don't necessarily love the center to be the guy who's looking through his legs to get the call. Because once he goes down, if they move at all, so say we're going, these three are sliding to these three. Well, once he exits, so he's gone, he's misaligned, you would love the point declaration to go from here to here. So now it would be almost like a turn to the right. And again, they've got dudes on both ends here. But like, I, I just, th this to me just doesn't make sense as far as watching the pass pro. There's no way Fred Warner should run free through an interior gap. It just shouldn't happen. Through the B gap free. Even if you were sliding to the left, and this is going to sound crazy to some people, but I would prefer to have Bosa be the free runner because at least he has to run the farthest. This is through the B-gap from the line of scrimmage. I mean, he's in the feet of the defensive lineman. This, to me, is a big dual squeeze. Again, not a great start. Not great, Bob. No great hot answers. You don't see 80 peaking. You don't see 15 peaking. <laughs> Luckily, Lamar is such a, an athlete that Fred Warner has to blitz under control. So he never even gets home. But he certainly impacts the play, and it leads to that nightmare. Jesus. Next one here to get, keep this kind of slow start going. Third and three, we're going to run inverted Hank. Now, <laughs> if you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I dislike this play. They get bailed out, in my opinion, with a penalty here from the free safety who loses his mind. This is Lamar Jackson creating out of structure. There's a throw available here. I think it's a tough throw on third and three. I personally think of Hank or inverted Hank as a zone centric call. And I'm not sure why you would ever call that in a third and three situation. You know, you, the percentages are going to be pretty high for most defenses that it's going to be some iteration of man. So for me here, Hank is just sit over the ball. Inverted Hank means the inside guys are running the hooks and then you're getting these one step smokes on the perimeter. So it's the same play as Hank, just changes who's in the curl flat area down here to the bottom. So what is normal on Hank here, flat, you, you end up getting the same distribution. You just get there a little bit different. So in zone, I think it's a better play because if you bring your wide receivers in here, they're inevitably going to be matched up not on corners, but on more kind of safety linebacker types interior and have the corners outside. But again, you read this thing inside out. Well, yeah, this guy is here, but nothing about this play says that you're going to get to that spot. So it's just a, it's a for who, for what call for me. I don't know why teams even carry this anymore. I get it for a second and forever. But like, you know, I would say the depth down here by 15 is off as well. The sit's not there. The hook down here is not there. Yeah, maybe the hook up top is there. But you would never get there with the read because the guy who takes away the sit, so whoever, whatever side takes away this sit route right here, whoever squeezes this, so right here, it's this player. So he squeezes it from the sits from the field or the wide side. That means that you would go one here, two here, three here. Nothing about this read because this guy is the guy who takes it away says go up here. So it's just, it's, I think this play's got a bunch of blind spots and holes. And actually, they're not blind spots. They're gaps. They're caverns. People still call it. Lamar does a nice job here of trying to create something. Good things happen when you throw the ball down the field, for the most part. And right here, 31 just kind of loses himself. Hits the tight end early. So no. Got to go. Create. Eyes downfield. Fortunate. Next one here, second and six. I put this one on here just because I thought it showed how the penalties impacted this 49er defense early on, really extending these drives. It's a nice strength from Lamar Jackson here, not going down. But, I mean, there's penalty flags everywhere. Every single kind of person in the defensive secondary throws their flag. 
We've got PI, we've got holding, we've got illegal contact, we've got horse collar potentially. It's just, it's layered out there with like yellow sprinkles. It's just got double slant down here to the bottom. No, you got spot or snag up top. No penalty up top. I mean, look, there's already two flags up top, right? Down here to the bottom, another flag. I mean, just brutal day for the back end for the 49ers. I think, you know, potentially seeing this matchup again, you would love to see them say, hey, all right, Lamar's going to make plays and extend things. Well, they've got to catch the ball. There's got to be no panic on the back end as far as giving them these free yards. Next one, third and eight, balls on the 12. They're going to hit us with zero, free runner up top. Lamar gets it out, makes the correct decision. The answer just isn't good enough. And I don't mean that's not necessarily on Lamar Jackson. That's on the answer to the to the question. If they're going to hit you with zero, and you're hot into your face into the free runner, is whatever this route is. I'm not even going to give it a term. We'll just describe it. He goes up, and then he turns inside and just kind of pedals this way. To me, that's not a great hot answer, right? It's third and eight. They want you to catch and throw it like this and have allow them to rally and make this tackle. The better answer would be something down like this down here to the bottom where it's a run away. So to me, this is a staticky stop route. So he runs up, turns in, and just pedals away. So he's not running towards his end zone. So it's a static route. Now, uh, probably a better answer here would be to put some stress on this corner. So if you're going to run a corner or seven by the number one, then run a little flat right there. And yeah, if he drives this thing, then you've got to bail and just throw this thing up to the back pylon and hope the corner gets it. But whatever this is, to me, is not a good enough answer to the test. But for Lamar Jackson, it's absolutely the correct throw. So free runner, get the ball out, do not get hit, third down, get a completion, field goal, great. Now, offensive architecture not my favorite answer. You can see down here, if you raise up and put it on four, that's a run away. He's probably going to get a first down. So just different types of routes lead to different outcomes. But I love Lamar Jackson here being decisive, recognizing the pressure, getting the ball out, doing really nice things. Next one here, a little RPO. Really like the Ravens RPO, SRO game in this one. These are what I would consider easy-ish throws. Beautiful read here. We're going to read Fred Warner, 54, the linebacker on the left. He's unblocked. As soon as he inserts into the run, we rip that slant right off his ear. So just a beautiful job here. So this linebacker is your key or conflict defender. We can't block him in the run. So once he steps over at all, we're going to replace his space with this slant. So yeah, it's easy to say we'll stop RPOs by playing man coverage. Well, guess what? This guy's one of the best slant runners to ever do it. Good luck. Lamar Jackson operating it at a really high level right here. Simple inside zone RPO with a slant. You can see the horizontal stretch everywhere, right? You see the flat by the tight end. You see the bubble up top by the slot. Great stretch. Creates all sorts of space for that slant. Again, what I would consider a pretty easy read for Lamar Jackson so here's your conflict defender. As soon as he moves at all and doesn't kind of late or delay this thing, all we do is base block the backside. We got these one-on-ones at the line of scrimmage, and then we're going to run block the front side. So this combo up to 57. Got the one-on-one -on -one reach. So just a simple play. Spread offense. Who would have thought Lamar Jackson really good in an RPO game? Love it. Whoop. Simple, right on him. Excellent read, execution. Next one here, a little SRO. I thought Lamar Jackson really showed off his capacity to kind of have, you know, not have to have his feet set. He's always had that quick dart-ish kind of throwing action, able to flick it wherever he wants right here. Really nice job. We can't block the apex defender to the right, the nickel, the number two. He's blitzing, so they alleviate the blitz pressure with a bubble. Just a really nice job. So we've got six in the run blocking unit, five offensive linemen, Sniffer type, this player right here is unblocked, right? We've got four down linemen. We've got the 
two linebacker types right here. Those are being blocked blue on blue. The nickel or star right here, he's the quarterback's. So once he blitzes right here, we've got to have an answer. Well, that answer on this play is a bubble. So we come up here, block it, one-on-one. -on -one. Now, again, this is not the easiest throw in the world. You've got the back right in your lap. You've got to navigate him with your feet, flick it out there to the wide side, give a good catchable ball. You can see that nickel. As soon as that nickel block comes, he's unblocked. Good enough throw. Forward dynamic, making people miss on the perimeter, turns into a little mini chunk. So again, great job from Lamar Jackson executing the offense, playing point guard, distributing the ball. Just love to see it. Next one here, third and four. Get meshy. We're going to end up hitting Beckham down here to the bottom. Does a nice job settling up in the zone. Well executed, right past the first down. Big time third down. Love getting the fast four. I will say just watching this offense, to me, you can certainly see kind of the, what I, what I would say are the bones of more of a college -y game. What I mean by that is you don't see a lot of fast four motion in the league. Okay, so we get fast four, meaning four eligibles to one side. We then get some iteration of mesh. So right here, great job finding that soft spot, settling up. And we've got these runaway crossers with the in. Just lots of great answers versus man here. I would just say non-traditional Sunday kind of formations, looks. I mean, everybody runs mesh nowadays, but how they get there, different things that they use over the course of this game, I just thought it was a really nice plan. Great execution here from Beckham and Lamar. So no, again, got to move a little bit. You know, can't keep that perfect base. Great job being on the same page with Beckham. If anything, I would say, you know, obviously he knows what he's doing, catching the ball. But this throw is better than the outcome. And what I mean by that is the ball location here is to on his left shoulder. So what that tells you is that you need to turn this way. Quarterbacks are going to try to throw you away from the near defender. So you don't want to catch the ball over here and then turn away from the ball because you're probably turning into the near defender. Now, that's not always the case, but that's kind of the, the hopeful ideal of the ball location on those types of throws. You can see him take a big shot there. Next one here. This was a pretty important play. Third and 10 from the 10. Now, we're not going to get a first down here, but we're going to get close enough where we're going to go for it on fourth and short and get a touchdown. We're going to get the chip a little shallow. Again, Lamar Jackson doing a great job of kind of working that pocket, subtle pocket movement to be able to keep his eyes downfield and find these little settle up shallows. So boom, on the same page, put it on him, get vertical. Now it's third and 10. Now it's fourth and one. Now we're able to run it and get a touchdown. So where the ball is going to end up going, we're going to chip Bosa. So we chip, then we're going to run a shallow. It's zone, so you settle up. Don't run to get killed here. Settle up in zone, keep running versus man. And again, once you put it on him, you got to catch it and get vertical. Turn away from that near defender. Just a really nice job here of navigating what they're giving you. They drop out. Hang, hang, hang. Trust the protection. Get it out of your hand. Be on the same page with these zone routes. Feel that grass. Feel that coverage. Nice job navigating that thing. Big third down there. Next one, one of my favorite throws of the game. This is going to be a sluggo comeback down here to the bottom. We are going to rip this with that. A <laughs> awesome anticipation. This is a big, big time hookup. I love the anticipation. Love the arm strength, the accuracy. Little play fake. He's lined up to his left. It's a beautiful route too. My goodness. If you haven't seen this route, let this thing wash over you. So to me, this is a sluggo comeback. So we're up. Sell the slant. That's already a double move. Then we're going to push up the field and run that comeback outbreaking off the screen for us. So I'll give you a better drawing. Up, sell that sluggo, and then back down and out. And again, y'all, this is it. I mean, this is world class for anybody. This is as good as it gets. Bold, increase the font, underline, italicize, give it some flair. It's a hell of a job. And he's also lined up to the left. So he's not kind of 
ready to go at the top of this thing. It's perfect. This is outstanding. Wait till I show you how early he throws this thing. First, watch the route to the bottom. Up, in, out. Now, when does he throw this thing? He's letting it go right there. He's already throwing it. Look at the receiver at the bottom. He's not close to breaking out of the vertical. I mean, that is well past halfway when he turns around. That is a straight up awesome world-class throw. It's a sweet route. It's an awesome throw. Love to see the evolution of Lamar Jackson to be able to incorporate deep down the field anticipation shots off double moves. Y'all, this is outstanding offense. Look at the drop. See how he drops almost like at an angle, like a dovetail to be ready to go to his left. Now he again pops up a little bit, but still big time. And Bosa's right in his lap. That's a massive play. Hell yes. Next one here, first and forever. This is Lamar Jackson, the playmaker. We're getting outside the pocket, going to our left. Going to hit the number two down here to the bottom in the slot on a scramble drill. Now, it's certainly living on the edge, no doubt. But the ability to kind of flip your hips, the vision to make that throw. Now, again, <clears throat> it's living on the edge. There's no doubt. But you've got to continue to just be impressed and in awe of his playmaking ability. The athleticism, running. He's not jogging to the left just looking for a throw. He's he's sprinting. Flip your hips, make that throw back across the field. Oh, my goodness. That is just demoralizing to a defense. Could you lock him down in coverage down the field? There's nothing there. You can't get home with the rush. He's then able to escape, threaten you to run it. So he's going to run it. He can go run it for a little mini chunk there. Nope, full speed. Flip your hips, back across the field, make a play, good enough throw, catch. Just an awesome play. <laughs> it's it's one of those ones. It's not a big gain, but just the athleticism to even attempt this thing. Switch the ball in your hands. Flip it back. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Next one here. Very similar play to the RPO slant we hit earlier. This time we're going to work the front side access throw. So they're going to bring pressure off the edge again with the nickel. This time, technically, he is blocked by the right tackle. But Lamar just likes the numbers. Likes the math, likes the grass out there, and is able to flip it out there. Again, I I can't tell you how difficult <laughs> this throw is when your feet are lined up like this. So his back left foot is back, so he's lined up like this to be able to then manipulate your body to be able to torque that thing and flip it out there around, which potentially could be a free runner. You don't know how they're going to handle it up front. They end up kind of pushing this thing, getting this thing blocked to the front side. But that's a that's a really, really nice play. So again, we talked about the horizontal stretch. Here's the bubble. Here's the flat. Here's the slant we already hit. And we said the backside inside linebacker was who we were reading. Well, last time he was lined up right here. This time he's walked up to the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be end up being almost like zone read from right here. So again, you can see the stretch that this thing causes. And again, this is essentially verse zero here. Lamar making the right decision, flipping his hips, getting the ball out, making guys tackle in space. It's an awesome play. It's a great play on the whiteboard, but it takes real talent to be able to flip this thing. Again, with his feet lined up the wrong way. Not even the wrong way, just lined up with your left foot back. It's no right or wrong here from shotgun. But to make that throw from that type of base, right on him, flick, hell yes. Next one here, another example of Lamar seeing the pressure and raising up and having the answer. So quick out up top. Verse zero, inside man. Just get the ball out of your hand. It's super decisive. It's just good, clean quarterbacking. It looks like he's got answers. He knows where the free runners are. He's able to distribute the ball quickly on time. We're not taking hits. It's just, it's high, it's high level quarterbacking against a really good opponent. So quick out. You can see the inside leverage up top, right? The corner's on the top of the numbers. The wide receiver's at the bottom of the numbers. That's my kind of leverage to throw a quick out. The free runner is going to be right in your face right here. So you get to navigate and see that player. It's just an outstanding job. This is one of the few reps in this game. It felt like more than most. But it felt like the 49ers were a little exposed. So whatever they're trying to do here, it doesn't necessarily look sound to me at the bottom. But it doesn't matter. I love the fact that Lamar Jackson is getting the ball out of his hands quickly. 
is decisive. It ends up being a first down. We're not taking a hit. You know, yes, it's a little underneath throw, but eventually those are going to turn into big plays when there's nobody back there. Great job. Next one here, another big play because Lamar Jackson can extend this thing. We're going to end up hitting the number three down here to the bottom, the tight end on the crosser. It's not there initially. We got to extend, 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 eyes down the field. Again, for being such a dynamic runner, he's also a playmaker. So he gets outside the pocket. He's not looking to just take off. So it's outside, eyes downfield. Settle up, strike right on the body, deep down the field for a big chunk. It's just an awesome job. This is playing quarterback at a high level. Don't force it. Nothing there. Go. Eyes down the field. Find the tight end working across, staying friendly. That just means staying flat, carving that thing down so the DB can't undercut you. And it's another big play that Lamar Jackson is creating. Out of structure, no panic, poise, strike. Next one here, third and 16. Just a back-breaking scramble. You know, if Lamar Jackson ends up winning another MVP this season, this feels like the play that's like the defining one for me. Because it's third and 16. There's nothing there. He just puts it all on his own and makes it look easy. Just looks like he's running at a different speed than everybody else. The ball control, the suddenness, the change of direction, making a good decision. There's nothing there. Third and 16, avoid a disaster, get out of there, just demoralizing to a defense. Whoop, Fred Warner, no chance. We got guys not even being able to touch him. Just a massive, massive play. I mean, it's just one of those things where third and 16, you're thinking, oh, yeah, we, there's no chance. Can't keep him in the pocket, lose contain, and then we've got one of the best linebackers in the game overrunning him because he knows how fast he is. He's trying to cut him off as fast as he can, not get to the sideline, cut it back, and go get another 20 and not get touched. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a play. Just an awesome job here. Lamar Jackson, just next level. This is that special, special stuff. No, no, no. Whoop. Great awareness. Now we're out. Eyes downfield, looking to create. Not there. And now it's just next level. Whoop, whoop. Easy glide, not getting touched. Protect yourself. Awesome. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I really do appreciate you subscribing to the channel. So thank you for taking the time and doing that. It means a lot to me. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have courses on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. How to beat every coverage is the best selling course. We even have an entire offensive system available for you. So hop over there and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available, also linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, again, Lamar Jackson, the creator. He doesn't like it down the field. We're going to end up finding the check down as we extend to the right. So no down the field. Now, we'll talk about down the field. But right here, find the check down. It turns into a massive chunk. <laughs> Just continues to create. If it's not with his feet, it's with his arm, it's with his ability to extend, it's with his decision-making. Really nice job here again. Nothing there. No panic. Out to run. Nope. To throw it. Always that available. Turns into a big chunk play. Now, yes, it ends up working. For me, though, this play down the field to the bottom is there with the sale. So whether this is a clear or a post, it really doesn't matter. Out. And then this, all you're trying to do here is kind of have an understanding. What is this corner doing? Is that corner getting depth out of there? If he is, this ball probably needs to be thrown. I think it probably does need to be thrown in structure. Now, it's nice when you can, quote, unquote, probably make a mistake and then still turn it into a big chunk to your back. Now, maybe the corner down here is cheating. If the corner down here is cheating, you'd love to throw that big post. You can see that corner kind of in no man's land, spinning, falling out. It's going to be a big chunk if you throw that sail down here to the bottom. He doesn't like it. Okay, great. Go make a play. Exactly what he does. Turns into a big chunk regardless. It's an awesome job. Thought Lamar, quote unquote, managed this thing really well. 
meaning the fact that he made certainly made some electric plays, but if it was blurry to him or it didn't make sense, he didn't force it. He extended. He made good decisions outside the pocket. Turns into a big chunk. And again, just another back-breaking play. Next one here, touchdown pass. You guessed it, out of structure again. This time we're going to be working to our left. So he doesn't like it. No, no, no. Find 15 down here at the front pylon. He does a really nice job, 15, with the scramble rules play. We'll talk about exactly what I mean by that. But Lamar, just doing Lamar things. He doesn't like it, makes a good decision. Get out of there, extend. Keep your eyes up. Beautiful throw going to your left. Easy flick. Hell yes. It's a beautiful play. So I'll pause it once we kind of get on the scramble mode here. So he's out. Here's 15 right here at the bottom of the screen. So he does a great job right here of as soon as the quarterback comes towards you and you're in the flat area where you're kind of the only sides player, different roles have different teams. I love the indicator that you're going to come back to the quarterback. So you take the and run away from the quarterback, turn your back to the quarterback, a hard two steps to allow them to flush and get time, hard two steps, and then come back. And that's exactly what he does. It's a thing of beauty right here. Watch him turn his back and then come back. So you know the quarterback knows you're going to do that, and he sees your indicator of you turning your back. You don't just go kind of wave your arms. Watch him turn, come back, and look what it does to the DB. Whoa, he gets lost right at the front pylon. Just an absolute thing of beauty. Great job executing the scramble drill at a really high level in the red area. Need it. Again, just so elusive. Accelerate away. Easy flick. Hell yeah. Next one here. First and goal from the nine. A sudden change. This is a beautiful design play. We'll talk about the design of this thing. Watch how quick they go breaking the huddle. Fake the flip. Little double post wheel. They get confused at a number of different spots, and it's a touchdown. It's awesome. The formation is outstanding. Great job scheming someone open. Also, talk about that for play callers. So, first of all, the quick ability right out of the huddle, you saw how quickly they ran up. Yeah, let's go through what this formation is. This is the tight end lined up at the left tackle spot. So, I don't know the. Ravens personnel well enough to know, but I would guess that this is probably the left tackle standing right here. So now it looks like zero by four quads bunch. Okay, but you can't go zero by four in college. You need a eligible to every side, I think. The rules have changed since I've been out of the game, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So to me, this is another example of like a college formation. So FIB, formation into the boundary. This has the presentation to the defense of four eligibles over here even though this guy's not eligible. Okay, and really, you've got the five eligibles, potentially, even though this guy's not eligible. It's just the presentation. They don't know who's who in the zoo. You can see them back here. Who you got? What you got? What we got? Okay, so what happens here is that the, the actual play is not that complicated. Post, where the touchdown is, post, and then wheel. You're going to fake toss it right here. Now, there's a few things going on here. Because the tight end is playing left tackle here, he doesn't go out. So very similar to the Purdy pick, I think in the same end zone, this player isn't threatened vertically. So he could theoretically push over here and be a problem for this inside post. Now that doesn't happen, but he could. The other thing is who's blocking Bosa here? Are we just saying, hey, Bosa's going to go with the fake? Because nobody blocks him. Because once we come down here, he's just standing there by himself. So a little bit fortunate. Again, this is kind of trick effing people with your formation. But again, we're living on the edge. The reason I like the tackle over here is because when you go to toss this thing, you fake toss it, you end up being over the right guard, which is really the center, right? Because if this was the center, guard, tackle. The center is the guard. The guard is the tackle. The tight end is the tight end. So you end up getting to the center of the pocket just manipulating it in a unique way. If I had to guess, I would say that this play is designed to get the ball to the bluff wheel. So probably designed to go right here. So he's going to come out, fake block, and then up the wheel. Pretty rare, I would say, to get this guy to pop as much as he pops. So first, let's watch that safety, the near safety, right in the middle of the hash. So see how he just hangs there? 
He doesn't push over at all. Now watch Bosa up top, the defensive end outside the right, outside the extra tackle. So he just is in no man's land. Now again, maybe the tackle would block him. I don't think so. The tackle looks like he's looking on the inside gap. I'm not sure who would block him right there. It really doesn't matter all these things that we're pointing out that are potential deficiencies. It works perfectly. Fake the toss, great base, great timing, guy pops wide ass open, touchdown. It's beautiful design. FIB, double post wheel into the boundary with the quick sugar huddle. But you can see here, this, this could have gone sideways. It's perfect right here, though. Next one here, third and one. Zone read. The ability to run Lamar Jackson anytime is a cheat code. Short yardage situations right here. I love the fact how they used it. It's just a simple zone read. We're reading Chase Young. He's head up on the tight end to the left. They actually don't block it correctly, but the 49ers got some great linebackers. But Lamar just makes them look pedestrian right here. Like it really is just a simple zone read. They're there, but they can't make the tackle. The guy just never gets hit hard. So what is this play? This to me is just simple zone read. Here's the conflict defender. Okay, we're arcing out here. So he's up on the DB type. And then we're just going to one-on-one, -on -one, little combo right here. And then theoretically combo right here. What they end up doing is because the linebacker is coming from such depth, he just kind of almost like scrapes this thing right away. They can't get off the combo. So he's unblocked here. But because this is Lamar Jackson, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just, it's all about using your weapons. And even though it's not Greg Roman calling the shots, they're still able to utilize Lamar's skill set. I mean, that's just a simple zone read. Not blocked correctly, and Lamar still makes it work. Powerful runner. Next one here, love the aggressiveness. We're going to hit a sail down here to the bottom. Post shift. We're going to get zero. And the number two, the tight end's running that sail. So he's going to sell that over. Come out of that thing, back to the corner, throws right on him, ends up being a big chunk. Now, this is a big chunk. The Ravens are a little unlucky that they didn't have kind of post sale on here as opposed to flag or back pile on sale. Because if you have a post, this thing is going to score. Now, it's still a big chunk play, and I love the aggressiveness. Just the 49ers felt feeling like occasionally they got stretched in their pressures here. There's a lot of space. Obviously, getting straight arm to the face doesn't help either. But for me here, post shift, if you have zero here, if the number one to the bottom runs a post, this thing's a touchdown. So this scores. What I'm saying they run is that more of that back pylon flag. So he comes in and he's setting that thing back here. And so where the ball ends up going on this sale, he comes out, sells that over, and then comes back out of here. Well, they're fortunate that 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 we didn't they didn't have the post locked in. Regardless, it's still a big hit, and you make somebody miss in zero, it's going to turn into a big chunk. But they're nowhere near getting home here with a six person protection, playing zero, just living on the edge against Lamar Jackson and these guys because that's just carving them up down the field, straight arm to the face, get off me. Turns into a massive chunk play. Just felt like the more physical team all night. Just love Lamar Jackson. Really enjoyed the play calling here as well. Staying aggressive. Play action. Move the launch point. Again, look at the pass protection. I mean, no one around him. Right on him. Get off me. Boom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Next one here. Third and one from the one. Okay, I thought this was a big missed opportunity. Not big missed opportunity. It was over at this point. But missed opportunity here. Q power. I think a few things go sideways here. First of all, I really like the formation. It looks like they've got tackle over again. They've got the extra offensive lineman in there as well. Bosa does a great job. 90 does a big time job as well. But this is one of those plays where if I'm going down, I'm going down with Lamar Jackson running the rock. Third and one, that's where I want to live. So I love that idea the intent of the play i think the execution gets them a little bit sideways here so to me q power here so first of all this is a tight end this is a tight end right so there's no left tackle so the left tackle is over here somewhere again this looks like an extra offensive lineman so we've got the extra tackle and the extra offensive lineman here okay this is bosa 
he destroys this guy. So he's trying, basically, this whole right side of the offensive line, they are all going to gap to their left. So, boom, it's a lot of one-on-one blocks because they're all gapped out. But this should be the double team. They're, they want this double team up to here. That's what they're trying to get. Okay. But what happens here is Bosa destroys this block, and then we get destroyed right here. So right at the point of attack where we're trying to get this kick out here on Bosa, and then we're pulling the backside guard to lead the, the way through there. There's really nowhere for Lamar to go. Like you're trying to tell him, I think the easiest way to tell runners where to run with the ball here is trying to find common color. There's no common color. There's red everywhere. So as he tries to sort this thing out, we get destroyed here, we get destroyed here, and there's nowhere to go. But if we're going down, I'm going down like this. Power, give the ball to your best player. You just hope that you can hold up a little better at the point of attack. Watch both on the right edge, man. He just destroys this. Boom, get off me. And then 90 does a great job getting rid of 78. There's just no common color anywhere. Right, where do you want him to go? They do a nice job of squeezing that thing, bottling it up. But I love the idea, love the idea of running Lamar Jackson down here in the tight red. And you're almost surprised that he doesn't get it. Like very rarely would I say that, you know, that's about as soft as he ever hits a hole like that. Last one here, third and eight, trying to get into their four minute offense to ice this thing out. This to me is drive out. Same play we started with the video with. We sky mailed the out the first time. This time the drive is there. We just get it knocked down. Fred Warner does a nice job of kind of getting through there in his rush, getting his hands up. He's not going to get home. Hand up. We can't quite find the lane to be able to hit this thing. But again, we've already talked about what this play is. Clear. Here's the out where we sky mailed the first time. Here comes that drive. We've got the pick basic. Trying to get that rub and come across. But again, this is there. These guys getting physical all night out here on the perimeter. Got called for a lot of penalties right here. This would have been a nice hit. Lamar just can't quite get this thing up and over, or find a lane to be able to hit this drive. Again, you can see that pick basic up top does a really nice job by the tight end making that corner navigate the long path. That's going to be a big hit. Just can't quite find the throwing lane, and that's a shame because that really would have iced that thing. But man, overall, just a great job from Lamar Jackson, this unit, making big plays, creating, finding ways, and taking advantage of the field position. So that is a wrap. Lamar Jackson doing Lamar Jackson things. Big time performance. Now, certainly taking advantage of some turnovers, some great field position. Not necessarily the greatest bookends to this game as far as the start and the finish, but everything in between really liked. Lamar Jackson beating the pressure, being decisive, having the correct answers to the test doing a really nice job of making some big plays, whether on time, in structure, with anticipation, outside the numbers, driving the ball down the field, and with his legs, both running, being creative, being sudden, being explosive, and also with his arm and his eyes, extending plays, keeping his eyes down the field, ripping it down the field, making plays off platform. Just so much fun to watch see a dude operate at such a high level. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.